Hello, it's Scott Manley here, once again, taking on Mars. Bringing our new Tier 4 rover to the Martian surface because it has new scientific objectives. It has new scientific equipment that we have developed that can perform the objectives that the previous rover could not. So yeah, I, if you remember, I was thinking about driving my old trusty Tier 3 rover, the 1.2 kilometers here. It would only have taken an hour or so. Um, but you can't select the missions, so therefore you can't do them, so you actually pretty much have to send a new rover with all the shiny new gear. Shiny new gear in the form of a new radio thermal generator, which means that we will generate power even if it's night time. We don't need the solar panels to charge. Uh, also, it will include a new environmental analysis station that will presumably suck and analyze in the air. And of course, a new color camera so we can appreciate the monochromatic redness of the Martian environment in full-on Technicolor. I'm sure there's all sorts of interesting data that can be gleaned from these reddish images. But let's go on and start our expedition here. So, take photographs and presumably new color photographs which will be look much much better in the newspapers and the magazines of the era yes uh, well that's that's four missions i've successfully sent to the martian planet to mars so far that's far better success rate than reality you know the i was just thinking the first people to try sending missions to mars were the soviets they they tried during the 1960 launch window they had two spacecraft that were going to fly by both of them never made it into orbit. Let's take this picture. There we go. And uh, yet yeah, two years later, they uh, actually had three space probes lined up. One was uh, one was a well, one was a flyby, one was a lander, and there was a, a third one which was going to fly by. But basically, the first two failed to get anywhere once again. They failed to get into orbit. The third one, which was called Mars One, it actually you know, got into orbit, made its injection maneuver, was heading towards Mars, and it traveled about a hundred thousand kilometers over, um, I, I don't know, like three hundred, several hundred days, and then they lost contact with it. So <laughs> they uh, so close and yet so far. But 1964 was the year when Martian exploration actually really started. There we go. You click analyze. I guess this one, yeah, you got to click to suck in the atmosphere and do some sort of spectroscopic analysis on the contents of the Martian atmosphere. Yeah, so 1964, there was a whole bunch of spacecraft. There was Mariner 3 and 4, which were both US probes. Those, this was the first attempt. Um, but the Soviets also had the Zond spacecraft. They had a couple of those. But again, the Zond spacecraft both failed. Um, you know, one of them had a failure at launch and the other, again, was partway to Mars before it was lost. Now, Mariner 3 and 4, well, Mariner 3 had a problem on launch. Mariner 4, however, actually was successfully launched and it made its way. It took seven and a half months to reach Mars. Oh, here we go with all tasks of major scientific value complete. The mission can be considered successful. Well done. Well, thank you. Yeah, Mariner 4, uh, it took seven and a half months, and it wasn't until 1965 when it flew past the planet. And they took a bunch of pictures, of course they had radiation sensors, and, uh, you know, interesting stuff. Well, they obviously found a cratered surface. They managed to measure an atmosphere of about 1%, which at that point, the scientists were like, holy crap, only 1%. All the designs for the landers that they had had were, you know, would have failed <laughs> because they presumed a denser atmosphere at that point. Okay, where are we looking for this? Find the rock formation. Um, oh, yeah. No, let's go to the closer one. This is only 20 meters away. It's on the other... Ah, who left that there? I could have driven straight across if it wasn't for that silly base station sitting there. Just, like, sitting there, still, on the Martian surface, Getting in the way of everything and everyone. Look, look, can't you see there are people trying to get by? Okay, well, let's uh, head towards this target nevertheless. So yeah, Mariner 4 was really important. They took a bunch of pictures and, you know, the funny thing is the way they, they worked in those days, it was like a TV camera and they would essentially record the, the images to something like videotape. You know, they would have a scan, a, scan, a tape which had lateral scanning on it. 
and then they would have to play those back and uh, play the images to Earth. It took a really, really long time to get the data, but you know, they would build up strips of images, and they got a bunch of a bunch of cool images. They, they also they didn't find magnetic fields, uh, no radiation belt, and they estimated the temperature was pretty darn low. Ah, now look, now we see a photographic target that says color. So you can't complete this mission without a color camera. It's a good thing I brought one because we can appreciate all the glorious redness in every single way. So yeah, 1964 was the year where Mars exploration finally happens for real. Anyway, a few years later, the uh, US sends Mariner 6 and 7. Those are two other flyby missions that send back more fascinating data. But it isn't until the 1970s where the exploration really kicks off. And in 1971, the Soviets try to launch three spacecraft which will orbit Mars, and the US tries to launch uh, one. They all try to kind of beat each other into orbit. So Mariner 8 fails on launch. Mariner 9 does launch and successfully gets into orbit. The US have three spacecraft. One of them, I believe, fails on launch, and then the other two are Mars 2 and 3, and those are a combination of orbiter and lander. So they, they manage to get both of those or things into orbit, but Mars 2, the lander, fails. Mars 3 lands and gets the first successful landing on Mars and starts sending back data for all of 14 seconds before its transmission fails mysteriously. And I hear that that's one of the Easter eggs you can find in Take On Mars. But right now we are simply trying to get a good angle on these rocks so we can send them back for the journalists back on Earth. Yeah, so with um, Martian orbiters in place, they were able to start mapping the, the surface. The Soviets sent like five more missions. Unfortunately, none of them successfully landed. Here we go. Color picture. Smile. The, nope. Okay, we got one more there. Oh, hey, he's just hiding out of the corner. Hiding around the corner there. A little more things to take. Yeah, so with a, you know, Mariner... With the Mariner probes in orbit, the, the US was able to start mapping the surface and thinking about doing their own landers, which would, of course, snapshot. Okay, photo complete. Now i got to do some atmospheric analysis. And yes, I've got to select the information, the, the instrumentation, and find the environmental analysis station. Oh, it's all the way over there. Is that on the other side of the rock? It better not be. Well, no rest for the wicked. <laughs> Money don't grow on trees. Uh, yeah, so anyway, the the Soviets sent like five more, and they all did interesting stuff, but none of them landed, which is a shame, because obviously they got the first landing and information from the surface, but they kind of never managed to successfully follow that up with an actual successful mission. No, it wasn't until like 1975 where the US sent the Viking spacecraft, and again, these had, they, these did it right. They did orbiters and landers, and Viking both landed, both of those successfully landed on the surface, and they did, you know, all sorts of really good science. They, uh, there was a famous set of experiments on the Viking probe which actually aimed to determine whether there was life in the Martian soil. What they had was you would take a soil sample, and they would put it into essentially an incubator with a bunch of different experiments attached to it. They would give it, you know, water and warmth, and they would see if uh, if it reacted in interesting ways. And so they had, like, gas chromatographs, and they would look for radioactive markers in the, in the um, being emitted after, you know, products were being metabolized. Um, so, so they went and they found organic molecules, uh, but didn't find the markers that they expected. They, they did get some positives on some experiments, but negatives on all the others. So most people thought that it was just like soil reactions. But honestly, it's still not clear whether at this point, you know, there's certainly not a strong evidence for life in the Martian soil. But at the same time, the uh, experiments on Earth have not ruled them out. So anyway, yeah, the results were inconclusive, but there's, well, okay, here we go. Analyze atmosphere completed. 
Rock formation near Victoria, major tasks complete. Our estimates are the Victoria crater must be hundreds of millions of years old. Even though insides of the crater are visible rock layers, material that was during the impact event objected over the top layers has been smoothed and worn flat. Wind plays a major role in these erosion processes. It moves dust and sand across large areas, and these particles can, with time, wear down and polish any rocks in their path. They will be subjected to the inevitable wearing down over time. Okay, so we have some photographs to take. But yeah, it's interesting that there's a, another idea that, you know, why bother trying to detect life in a specific soil sample, right? There's suggestions that if you go and you analyze the atmosphere of a planet and you find that it is chemically out of equilibrium, this is a, an argument by James Lovelock, um, you know, then that is evidence of some sort of processes that is driving the atmosphere out of equilibrium, which is typically life. If you look at the Earth's atmosphere, there's all this free oxygen. And that normally doesn't happen, right? Because the oxygen, well, oxidizes things and gets absorbed. But we have these things called plants that take, take this carbon dioxide and everything and metabolize it into oxygen with the aid of sunlight. Ah, come on, I'm gonna take this nice fancy color picture here. Where is it? Where's that? That last one is just out of my... I, out of my way. Guess I'm gonna travel further along the thing. Um, so yeah, they've actually since the the Viking missions, they've detected that methane has been discovered in Mars's atmosphere, right? And so there's a suggestion or there's a plan to send the uh, uh, gas uh, analysis satellite basically to analyze the atmosphere it's supposed to be launched in a couple of years time and that will actually look at the atmosphere in much more detail than uh, anything has so far and the idea being that well methane is one example that has been cited because methane is one of these things that tends to occur from biological processes and if it's there and if it is out of equilibrium then there's a suggestion there may be some sort of global life processes um, the the other uh, intre there's another interesting argument that uh, I've also heard that the Viking probes were a great idea with their biological you know analysis systems, but um, when they landed they landed on rockets and therefore they would have cooked any any Martian bacteria on the surface if they were looking for them. So <laughs> it's just a, a kind of a funny idea like oh why didn't you think of that that you were going to take a soil sample from like where you'd just been burning rocket motors uh, you know not everyone can stand in a rocket motor and survive not everyone is a Kerbal <laughs> okay we got this uh, almost just a little further get me, the, get me that last sweet red marker green yes color excellent assign nearest mission Aha! Rock formation near Victoria. Minor tasks complete. And I th oh, there we go. Um, let's... Oh, look! We've got a whole bunch of new markers now. We have successfully completed this mission. But we have one more nearby objective that we can use to enhance our money-making. Bring in more cash for the space agency. We, the agency. So we can all have t-shirts to commemorate this wonderful, um, I don't know, scientific endeavor. Who knows? <laughs> 120 meters away. And that calls for some time skipping. And here we are, the target is almost upon us after an epic 120 meter drive, which I shall probably edit out because I really couldn't think of anything to say. But nevertheless, we are here and we can now talk about now rather than the past. Exploration complete. Take photographic documentation of the specified region. Again, using the new powerful color camera. Camera. Oh, just snapshot. Excellent. Now, analyze. Oh, it's another EAS. Another environmental analysis station. I, I'm kind of missing the APXS. I had so much use of it during the last mission. I spent all that time explaining to you what uh, an alpha particle x-ray spectrometer actually does and how it works and making jokes about atoms losing electrons. But no, now I just have to suck the atmosphere in. Okay, well I just drive through that one, that was easy enough. Atmosphere, EAS. 
Uh, there's another one. We don't have distances on these atmospheric things, but I guess they're not too far away. Just drive into this one and start sucking in the atmosphere and analyzing it. Maybe we will find some evidence for a methane imbalance pointing to some sort of life processes in the Martian biosphere. Um, honestly, the odds are there is going to be life on Mars. That's what I believe, because... The, the harder we look for life on Earth, the more we find it. I mean, we've we found, you know, bacteria living, you know, two kilometers inside solid rock. We found bacteria that live in pools of radioactive sludge. So presuming that life could have somehow been seeded on Mars, it would probably attempt to find a way. It's probably not little green men, it's probably bacteria that is really rugged and can survive in this semi-frozen soil, very low water. There we go, analysis complete. And yeah, no AP excess. With all missions, whatever, complete. We are there. And I guess that's us. The next place is those sites a couple of hundred meters away, and I'm certainly not going to make you watch me driving that distance. So until I get there, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.